God bless you, and welcome to a brand new episode of Miracles at Midnight. I believe that you are here on purpose. There is nothing random about your life. There is nothing random about the flow of your life, the season you are in, and if you happen to be feeling in your spirit, no, I feel like my life is completely random. Nothing is going according to plan. I I just desire to see good changes in my life. I, I desire to see greater cohesion, greater blessing in my life, then I want to tell you there's nothing random about the fact that you are here right now, that your steps have been ordered by the Lord because God has put you here right now, not randomly, but deliberately, intentionally, because it is your time to see a greater portion of favor in your life. It is your time to see greater blessing in your life. It is your time to see the hand of God moving and working and blessing in your life. Amen. Do you know that faith bears fruit? Do you know that faith bears fruit? Amen. That when you have faith in the Lord and you have faith in Jesus Christ and you have faith in the word of God, Things begin to happen in your life and you see things changing in you and around you. And what is that? That is your faith bearing fruits. And I feel to prophesy to somebody who's just coming onto the broadcast right now that you have been strategically put here to get this word, your faith is about to bear fruit. I don't want you to be encouraged. I don't want you to give up. Don't you dare quit before your miracle. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare quit on God. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. It's a lot of people these days who are, who are blaming God for all the things that are wrong in their life. You know, where is God? Why did God allow this? And I'll tell you something, we could go into this deeply. There's a lot of things we could say about why certain things happen. But the most important thing I want you to know right now is that the Lord is speaking to you right now. And the word of the Lord to you in this moment in your life is this. There is nothing happening in your life that God can't do something about. There may have been some attacks by the devil, not God. There may have been some things that were done to you by at the hand of other people, not God. But whatever you are going through, God can do something about it. And I believe that you are about to see your faith bear fruit. It's going to set you apart. It's going to set your feet on firm foundation. You're going to see God come into your world and establish you. Do you know that you serve a God who will establish you? God will establish you. He will settle you. So if there is anybody here that you have some outstanding matters in your life and you have some things in your life that you truly know that you have done all that you can do and you've done all that you know to do and you are believing for God to settle you, I'm going to agree with you tonight in faith. I'm going to come into agreement with you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are going to get together, we are going to release our faith and believe for the Lord to settle you and to establish you according to Psalm 138 verse eight, that he will perfect all that concerns you. He will perfect that which concerns you. People may have walked away from you, but God is never going to walk away from you. Amen. I don't want you to be disappointed or frustrated. I want you to get on fire and determined because do you know that there are some prophetic words that can start a whole different flow in your life? Not by might, not by power, not by a mere human being, but by the power of God that is on that word, by the anointing of the Lord that is on the word that is present in the atmosphere even now. And I came tonight with a strong prophetic word. Amen. I feel to say this in my spirit. God is about to show up for you and he's going to shut some things down. Oh, I heard that. God is about to show up and shut some things down. Amen. And when you see what the Lord does for you in this season of your life, oh, it's going to take your faith to another level. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and you will know that there is a God in heaven who loves you. And you will know there is a God in heaven who sees you and cares about you and has a good plan for your life. Amen. 
and there's nothing that's going on in your life that God can't do something about it. Amen. And trust me, my friend, you are not the one person in the whole world that God can't help. No, God is going to help you. Your faith is going to bear fruit. There's nothing random about this word or this encounter right now. I prophesy that God has ordered your steps so that you can receive this word. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome everybody who's coming on to this broadcast of Miracles at Midnight. Let me know in the comments where you are watching from. Man, we love to look back and see the comments and just see where everybody is tuning in from. What a glorious thing the Lord is doing uh, as he builds this ministry and is just building a global community from all over the world, brothers and sisters of the Lord in Jesus Christ. Amen. And I love to see it. So let me know where you're watching from. And beyond that, get ready to receive a powerful word from the Lord. And I do declare that many of you are going to testify what God did for you what happened in your life as a result of the anointing on this word because in this hour your faith is about to bear fruit praise the lord my name is dr jolyn whitaker i'm honored to have you with me without any further introduction let's get into the word for tonight amen the lord spoke to my spirit and he said to confirm to you that it is time to understand that your faith is a major force. Your faith is a major force. Let me know in the comments, have you ever noticed in the world how there is a mocking spirit when it comes to faith? Oh, you have faith, that's awesome. Now tell me what you're really gonna do about the problem. Oh, you have faith for this? That's awesome. Now, can we talk about some practical things that can be done? There is a mocking spirit against the force that is faith. And the reason that there is sometimes mocking and doubt, which is demonic, the reason there is sometimes mocking and doubt concerning faith is clearly because the devil knows that faith is a major force. A person who has real faith, oh my goodness, that is a dangerous person. That is a a powerful person. That is somebody who can really wreck the plans of hell. And that is somebody who knows how to stand on the word of God, pull blessings from the word of God, shift their life, shift atmospheres, and make an impact for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. The reason there is a mocking spirit that comes against faith and tries to minimize faith and tries to talk down condescendingly about faith and to people who have faith is because that punk devil knows, oh, you bet he knows that faith is actually a major force. I'm going to show you some things in the Holy Bible tonight that I believe are going to help you understand. And then you're going to say, oh my goodness, I'm about to release my faith and see God do miraculous things in my life. Amen. I stand with you in agreement on that. Praise the Lord. Your faith is a major force. Write that down if you're taking notes. It's not a a helpful ingredient. It's not um, having faith. It's not just having hope or being optimistic. No. The Bible says that faith is an actual substance. If you could see with your physical eyes, faith in the spirit realm, you would see that it actually has a consistency to it. It has a substance to it. And if that seems far-fetched or uh, a bit challenging to understand, I would submit for your consideration that oxygen is completely invisible, but yet you and I are breathing it right now, are we not? (laughs) Oxygen is completely invisible, but if we don't have it, we sure know we don't have it, do we not? Amen. Carbon monoxide is completely invisible, but when it is present in a room, in an atmosphere, we sure know it's there, don't we? Faith may be invisible to the human eye, but in the spirit and even in the natural, your faith has a substance and that substance called faith is a major supernatural force. I'm going to prove it to you from the Holy Bible. Write this down. Faith can loose bondages. 
Faith can lose bondages. Faith can move God to act. Amen. Faith can become a creative force. I'm going to show this to you in the word. Faith can align you for your destiny. Faith can change outcomes in situations. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm going to prophesy it just like I heard the Holy Ghost just say it. Please, please don't be so quick to call it. Please don't think you know how that situation is going to go. I don't care how it looks like as of right now. I don't care what it sounds like as of right now. Your faith can change the outcome. Amen. Especially when you do something I'm about to show you in the word. Your faith can create a new result. Perhaps a situation looks like it's flowing a certain way, but your faith can draw the power of God into that situation. Your faith can draw the presence of God into a situation. Your faith can release the word of God, amen, which changes things, which cuts through things, which is living and active and miracle producing. And so as such, your faith can draw the presence of God. And when God shows up, honey, anything can happen. Come on, right? When God walks into a situation, everything is subject to change. When God shows up, it goes down. Amen. Some of you are about to find that out. Praise the Lord. Especially when you release your faith aligned with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Your faith is a major force. Let's go to the Bible. I'm going to begin to prophesy through Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 6. I'm in my big old King James Bible uh, tonight. Amen. Or shall we say this this morning? Midnight is the, the span of time, the one hour of time between day and uh, between the old day and a new day, right? It is the transition hour between night and to daytime and so we are leaving one day behind grabbing hold of and moving into a new day that's symbolic and prophetic for you that you are moving into a new day you are moving into a new season you are moving into a new blessing God is about to do something new significant relevant and beautiful for your life amen and I believe your faith has a lot to do with that praise the Lord your faith is a major force Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, I'm going to begin to prophesy through. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Pause. I want you to begin to hold that definition in your heart and in your spirit, that when you have faith, when you find that you have faith for an outcome, somebody may say, well, can you see yourself getting that? I can see myself getting that house. Can you see yourself in that marriage? I can see myself in that marriage. I have faith for it. It's not a pipe dream. It's not a wish. You have faith for it. You can see it. Now look at what the word says. Because your faith is the substance of things hoped for. And when you find that you truly have faith for something, you can see it. Then that faith is actually the evidence of things that you can't yet see. It's the evidence of things not seen. So the outcome has already been settled in heaven. The outcome is already established in the spirit and your faith will be the, the substance, the magnetic supernatural power that will magnetize and draw that blessing into the natural. Amen. The blessing already exists in the spirit. The blessing has been settled in heaven by the word of God, by the approval of God, by the ordainment of God. And now your faith is the magnetic power, the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Your faith is the evidence that God said yes and that something is possible. If you've never seen that from the word of God before, as I open this scripture to you, do you see it now? Faith is actually evidence. Amen. Now let me flip it over. There have been times where many of you have had to admit to yourself, maybe you've had to admit to somebody else, I can't see it. I can't see it. I, I just, I know that I know this is not going to work out. I know that I know this is not the right thing. I know what my heart wants, but I also find that deep in my spirit, 
I know the way it's really going to go. Well, what is that? You're not being pessimistic. You are observing, observing the absence of faith. You're observing and you are commenting on and you are admitting the absence of faith. And the absence of faith has confirmed to you that there's no evidence that this can come to pass because it's, you can't see it. You can't see it. There is the absence of faith. There's no evidence that this thing is something God said yes to. Amen. But the presence of faith is the evidence of things that you have not yet seen. Amen. But it's the evidence that you can see it, that it's going to come in Jesus name. Now look at here at verse two, for by it, by what? By faith. Amen. <laughs> by it, the elders obtained a good report. Now pay attention. It's going to get deep here. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It's fascinating. First, he's saying the elders, elders in the faith obtained good reports and good outcomes and miraculous things by their faith. And then he goes right into saying, oh, and by the way, all the things you can see in the world, that beautiful tree outside your window, the beautiful sky that you just, you know, you're going to watch the, the sunrise, amen, if you stay up all night or whatever you look at outside in the world, the, the beach, the ocean, the park, the beautiful, uh, the, the beautiful field in that park there. Those are tangible things in the world. But when the Lord was first creating those things, he used substances that we can't see to create the things we can see. And that's how faith works. Faith uses things you can't yet see to create things that you will see. Amen. Your faith is a substance that produces miracles and it can create things in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel like this is good already. Praise the Lord. Now look at here. We're going to go into detail. Verse four, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. All right, what does all that even say? Well, if you know the story of Cain and Abel, they both gave a sacrifice to the Lord, but only Abel found that, was told that his sacrifice was acceptable. God was only pleased with the sacrifice of Abel. He was not pleased with the sacrifice of Cain. And when we look at that account very specifically, we can see why. By faith, Abel offered God his best. By faith, Abel uh, offered a sacrifice that was truly a sacrifice, right? And if you have ever sown seed generously, if you have ever sown seed or, 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 or made an offering that you can say, now that was a real sacrifice, you know what this is talking about. There are some offerings that really require a sacrifice. It's not a comfortable offering. It's not an easy offering. You're not giving something and hey, you can say you gave something, but it didn't really cost you anything. It's not like you really surrendered the best of what you had or something major, something massive, where now you feel the deficit. Abel's sacrifice pleased the Lord because it was that type of sacrifice. Now in the natural, he was surrendering the best of his flock. In the natural, it was going to potentially put that man at a deficit. But his faith, his faith was so confident that the Lord would be pleased. And when God is pleased, beautiful things happen in our lives. And so the, the Bible here is teaching about the power of giving sacrificially and how that requires faith and the faith in doing so will please the Lord. Wow. And then there at the end, it says by doing it, he being dead yet speaketh. What is that saying? It's a fancy way of saying we're still learning from that example even now. We'll, we're, we are still learning from the example of Abel and Cain even now. Down here in verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and he wasn't found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Well, this is referring to the fact that Enoch was a man who walked with God, 
had a very close relationship with God and he didn't die. He did not go through the process of death. Now the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be with the Lord. Amen. Well, Enoch became absent from his body and he went to be with the Lord, but he didn't have to go through the process of death. The Lord caught him up, took him to himself. And the Bible says the reason that happened was because he lived in a faith that pleased God. I feel strong. I hear the Holy Ghost saying to prophesy that your faith is about to make a very uncommon miracle happen for you. There are some miracles that happen in our lives that we hear about frequently. This one got a car, this one got a house, that one got their healing, that one got their spouse, this one, the prodigal child came home, that one, they're well, the, the clean medical report, the depression is gone, etc. I'm not minimizing those things. Those are huge, miraculous things. Amen. If you need any of those things, lift your hand. I release the anointing for miraculous healing, deliverance, and acquisition right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive. And you get ready to testify very rapidly because there's a strong anointing on this ministry for all those things. I say that humbly, giving all glory only to the Lord, but it is a fact. And this is also a fact. There are some things that are uncommon. Miracles that are uncommon. You hear about it, but you don't hear about it often. You hear about it, but you don't hear about it all the time. Something that is so different, so uncommon, so far out that truthfully, you might doubt it if it hadn't happened to you, but it is about to happen to you. There is an uncommon miracle that is about to happen to somebody here. And it's going to change your understanding of the supernatural. It is going to change the way you see the supernatural. And it is going to help you understand in a way you have never understood before that your faith is actually a major force. Because it is by your faith that you're going to see this miracle in your life. Things that are, that are, that are very uncommon. Amen. Get ready to testify. Praise the Lord. Now here in verse six, and we'll close on this, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to please God without faith. Oh, child of God, I want you to stir up your faith right now. I release the anointing prophetically for increased faith in the name of Jesus. It is impossible to please God without faith. Now, why is that? I'll tell you why. Because the person without faith in God does not look to God for their answers, does not rely on God as their source, does not first go to God as their healer, does not look to the Lord as their provider, does not look to the Lord as the source of all wisdom, all instruction, all guidance required for every scenario in life. No, they're wise in their own eyes and they're leaning on their own understanding. They're practical. They're practical. They do all they know how to do first. And then when they run out of options, then they'll go to God. They do all they know how to do first. They, they, they do all their stuff. They use all their own methods. They, they do all they can. And if it doesn't work as a last resort, they'll go to God. But God wants you to go to him first. God wants you to come to him first. God wants you to ask him first. He wants you to believe him first. He wants you to know deep in your heart and in your spirit that he can give you whatever you need, that everything you need is in the presence of God and all that you need comes from the Lord. Amen. All your provision, all your healing, everything you need in life, the victory you need, the favor you need, the outcome you need, it comes from the Lord. In his presence is fullness of joy, at his right hand pleasures forevermore. Psalm 1611. 
So when you have that kind of faith and you, co- you go to God first and you look to God first, that's your Abba Daddy. That's your provider. That's your victory. That's the one you know will show up for you. Amen. And when he shows up, it's going to go down. That pleases God. That's called having faith, sugar. And your faith pleases God. Amen. I get it. In a world of people who reject him, in a world of people who, who blaspheme him, in a world of people who minimize God and trash talk God, Oh, then he looks and he sees you, how you love him and how all your faith is in him. Well, you bet he wants to bless you. Amen. You bet he wants to reward you. And that is exactly how verse six concludes. It says, without faith, it's impossible, impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's your word. Your faith is about to bear fruit. Your faith is pulling miraculous things into your world. Amen. Child of God, we are deep into the last days. The church is catching on fire with the power of God and the fire of the Holy Ghost. You are in a miraculous atmosphere. You are in a season where the power of God is increasing and the fire is falling and miracles are coming forth more expeditiously and more abundantly than ever before. And your faith is pulling miraculous things into your world. Amen. God is about to reward you, praise the Lord, in the next several days because of your faith and because you have been diligent in your faith. Your faith has pleased God, and now your faith is about to bear fruit. Believe, receive, rejoice, and advance, and get ready to testify. I celebrate with you in advance. I praise the Lord in advance on your behalf, and I say get ready. God is about to bless you. Amen. I pray this encouraged you and fired up your faith on tonight. I'll see you next time. God bless you.